We are here for the Australian CrossFit Championship qualifying event number three. The first workout from the week two of the qualifiers. So Australian CrossFit Championship qualifier number three. Cool? Cool. Boom, simple. Couplet, simple, simple couplet. So, yes. We've got three rounds of 30 front squats at 110 pounds or 50 kilos, and then we've got 30 kettlebell snatches at 53 pounds, which is 24 kilos, right? So, super simple, super easy. Um, <clears throat> well, not easy, just really simple. A simple, simple couplet, but we are looking at a sprint. So, let's talk about this workout. First up, high level view, the 3,000 foot view of elevation. We've got this workout and it's a sprint in my books, right? It's a sprint, it's a, if you wanna get a good time, you are not dropping that front squat bar. Now, of course, you can drop the kettlebell and we'll get into that when we get to the kettlebell, but this is a sprint, this is a go get it workout. Um, I had uh, Travis Williams and Chandler Smith do it with me uh, the day we did this. And this is truly a turn off your brain and go get the workout done. And so in my books, this was a Travis Williams workout. For most of you that know Travis Williams, he has the uncanny ability of not being able to pace and just going like a bat out of hell. He is the prototypical opposite of me. But love doing it next to him. He beat me in this workout because it's a sprint, and Travis Williams, in my books, is one of the greatest sprinters when it comes to certain workouts like this. So um, I will talk about ways that he approached it and then ways that I approached it. So that's the general workout. Let's jump into the specific movement. So first off, we obviously have the front squat. So let's talk about the front squat, okay? First off, let's make the assumption that we are definitely, most certainly, unequivocally, for sure, no doubt in our mind, doing this unbroken. You gotta do it unbroken if you want a pretty decent score. Um, there are really two ways of doing it once you do it unbroken, okay? So, first off, you've got the fast and quick breaks, and then you've got slow and no breaks. You guys might be asking yourself, what, what does that even mean? Okay, so when I did my 30 front squats, if you guys have ever watched, if you guys have ever watched me squat and do a squatting workout, um, I like to do my squats as fast as I can, bounce out of the hole, um, and uh, do as fast as I can and bounce out of the hole. Therefore, I will take quick breaks when I get burned out. So let's say, for instance, for this workout, if I'm doing 30, right, I might do 10 really as fast as I can, take two quick breaths, and then knock out another 10, and then do the same thing. So I'm doing fast and quick breaks. That's how I like to do certain reps, especially when it comes to squats. Um, and that obviously pertains to front squats, back squats, overhead squats, I mean, sometimes even wall balls. Um, that's how I do front squats, and that's how I did them in this workout. I thought it fared well, I liked it. Um, Travis um, does squats differently than me. He likes to do the slow and no break kind of concept, so what he does is he'll, he'll squat, he'll come to the top and take a real quick breath and then go back down again. So he's not going as fast as he can, he's not bouncing out of the hole and going as fast as he can, um, but he'll, he'll squat, stand up, no way but he's not taking a break at 10 or at 15 or 20. He's just going slow and steady throughout. And when I watched the film, um, he actually got down his front squats faster than me by doing this concept right here, um, which is surprising to me. So it really comes down to how long your quick breaks are. So if you're you know, knocking out 10 as fast as you can, you stand it up and you're taking like a 15 to 20 second break with it on the front rack, probably not a good idea. You might want to resort to doing this. But this, when I watched the film of Travis doing it, I think Travis did it, and also Andrew Keekler, my training partner, did it also. It works fairly well. So you can apply this kind of mindset and this kind of concept 
for this workout, but you can also apply it to other workouts. I mean, it also applies to doing Fran. I mean, if you've watched people do thrusters differently, I like to do as fast as I can, boom, boom, just keep going, knock them out of the hole. But if you watch some guys, they'll actually press and breathe out at the top and then go. And that's where this concept comes into. So it really depends on who you are, what you're trying to accomplish, what the time domain is. Is it a sprint? What kind of workout are we doing? Um, in the case of this workout, uh, you're doing 30 rounds of, I'm sorry, three rounds of 30, so 90 front squats. So this fared pretty well, I think. It was a much better decision for some of the other guys. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's my thoughts on front squats. Um, two different concepts of doing them. If you're doing them unbroken, which I recommend. So, cool. Let's go on to kettlebell snatch. All right, so we got 30 kettlebell snatches at 53 or 24 kilo. We got three rounds of that. How do you approach that? Um, they did make up um, a rule for kettlebell snatch, for single arm kettlebell snatch that I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, it's their competition. They can make up their own rules. Um, but if you want to switch your kettlebell, so if you start off your first round of 30 and you're doing right hand and you decide, okay, I'm going to go to my left, you have to set the kettlebell on the ground and then reset to your left and then grab it from the ground. You cannot switch midair or um, people have been known to switch midair or they can come down, do a half swing and a half switch and then go to the other arm, right? So you have to bring it to the ground. I'm not really sure why they made that rule up. Seems kind of stupid. I mean, regionals, you can switch it however you want, but their game, we're playing, we're paying to play their game, right? So um, rules are you gotta switch at the bottom and the floor, um, which was different. Um, so how do you approach 30 kettlebell snatches? Um, Obviously, we're doing three rounds. We've got an odd number of rounds, right? So if we're looking at it, if you decide not to switch, if you're like, I refuse to switch, I'm doing all 30, all 30, all 30 on the same hand or different arms, I would recommend, obviously, you start with your good arm. So your first round is your good arm. Your second round is your bad arm. And then your third round is your good arm. Obviously, it's kind of intuitive, right? When I say bad, I don't really mean like your bad arm, but like obviously I'm right-handed, so that's my good arm for certain things. And then my left arm is good at other things, but like it's not great at kettlebell snatch, but I can still get the job done. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're that's if you're going to just do 30 and then do your 30 front squats and then do your 30 on your whole bad arm. You can do that. Um, I recommend switching. I think we got into that conversation when the last tips videos I did was the concept of Yes, you can go unbroken on something, but is it better to break and take your time and breath and then come back rejuvenated and attack it again? In this, in this sense, we're actually gonna switch arms, so it's not like you're taking a rest, you're just gonna switch arms. So I'd actually recommend not doing 30 on your right and then 30 on your left and then 30 on your right again. I, because near the end of those 30s, I think you're gonna be going slow enough on your right or on your left near the end of it that it might be beneficial just to put it down, waste that extra second, switch to your, uh, an arm that's not that tired, and then finish up at a faster speed there. I think you'll actually make up time in there. So um, how I did it was I believe I did 20 and 10, 20 and 10, and then 30. So I actually made two switches here, right, on the ground. So my first round, I started out right, I did 20, that's my good arm, I did 10, okay, put the kettlebell down, knocked out 30 front squats, came back, I actually did 20 again on my right because it is quite a bit faster than my left, and then I did 10 on my left, and then set it down, and then I actually came back, and my final round, I did 30 on my right. So my right arm got a lot of work. Yeah, so this is how I approached it, that was my rep scheme when it came to 30 kettlebell snatches, I did not do 30 on one arm in the first round. I did it in the final round because I was trying to make up ground on the fact that I lost on the front squats because if we go back to our front squat, previous front squat conversation, I did fast and quick breaks and some of the guys were a lot faster at the 30 front squats when they just did slow, no breaks. And so I was trying to make up a lot of ground. All in all, I thought it was a really simple and devastating little, little couplet, um, well-programmed, Really simple, very light, uh, a sprint. Um, so it was really cool. It was the final event I did for the Australian Cha CrossFit Championships. I did event four before it. Um, so yeah, that actually closes out 
all my tips for the Australian CrossFit Championship. I realize that this video is actually late from the deadline. It's actually past the deadline. But a lot of you guys have told me that, hey, even though it's not during the deadline, it's still beneficial because these concepts will still apply to other workouts you do, right? You can still apply the fast uh, balance out of a hole, thrusters or front squats or overhead squats or back squats with quick rest compared to the uh, slow but no rest to other workouts. And you can still apply these concepts we talk about and tips we, we apply to these movements to other workouts. It's still applicable. It may just not be specifically applicable because it's not the actual same workout. So anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I really enjoyed doing the Australian CrossFit Championship. It was a, that was well program. Um, and it was simple two weeks worth of workouts. And so yeah, that's really it. I'm gonna shut this camera down, really start it back up, and then we're jumping on the strength in depth qualifiers. Catch you guys later.